how did you get involved with Klaus, which tells the origin story of Santa Claus? Good old Santa. Yeah. Um, uh, you can laugh at that thing. <laughs> um, I was hanging out at Netflix uh, with my fabulous friends over there, and I uh, the first time I ever met Sunny Park, who is an unbelievable uh, queen of all things music and media, uh, she told me about Klaus, and I was like... The reason I started making music to begin with when I was young was because I, I was convinced that I was Ariel um, in The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Um, and then I was convinced I was Belle in Beauty and the Beast. So every Disney princess. I am a Disney princess standing here in front Belle of you. Belle is my favorite, so. I, I, I always that. relate to like sea creatures because they're kind of genderless. They don't, you know, it's, that's my, it's my, it's my vibe. But <laughs> so <laughs> when, <laughs> when, um, Sonny told me about Klaus. I was like, I have to, mm -hmm. I have to be involved. Um, and then I got on the phone with Sergio, the director, um, and his passion for this story um, made me very passionate. You know, it's it's you're telling a, a children's story, right? But I feel like the art that affects kids is kind of the most important art in the world because if you're teaching them stories of love and kindness and acceptance, um, you can possibly change an entire generation. Looking back on me, The Little Mermaid, um, you know, it's a pretty problematic story. And I think that, you know, she's the, the woman gives up her voice yeah, for, for a man. Guy, yeah. uh, so that's pretty fucked up. But Klaus tells a really beautiful story. <laughs> <laughs> um, a beautiful story about, you know, how in this very divided community um, that the idea of joy and the idea of love and acceptance can kind of heal all wounds or at least begin the healing process. Um, so I, I talked to Sergio and then immediately um, started writing. So he, he pitched it to you? So uh, at what stage was the film at that point? Um, I don't know technical terms of movies, but it's animated. And so like half of it was it fully... It takes years. Half yeah. of it was fully animated and half of it was um, sketches, storyboards. Someone help me. Y'all fancy people here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and which was really cool for me to see because um, the other animated films I've worked on in the past were, were done, done. And this was somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, and so that was really inspiring for me to see just because like as a fan of animated movies, it was like mm -hmm. pretty, pretty powerful to see that happening. Um, and so it was this was I, I think I saw it. I don't I don't know for sure, but I want to say like May or June mm -hmm. um, and then uh, wrote. You know, it, it was also really cool too. Sergio was very specific that you know, because the story takes place in Scandinavia, and um, it's a lot of the score and it and whatnot is inspired by um, traditional Scandinavian folk music, and so he wanted the song to somehow reflect that. Um, and so I collaborated with a um, a Scandinavian producer, mm -hmm. and then we had Zara Larsson, yeah, who, who is sings it, yeah. who is the, the the pop star, the pop queen of Scandinavia. She sings it, and so it was really interesting process to to dive in to that culture the best we could, but still have it serve the movie and mm -hmm. serve, you know, mm -hmm. a pop song. What was it like writing while the movie was still incomplete as opposed to your previous movies where the film was already completed? Yeah, it, it was awesome because I just felt like I was like part of the process. super cool. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> in the process. Um, and it's kind of like every, like when I work with pop stars, my my job or at least how I view my job is to help them tell the best version of their truth and elevate and focus their truth. Um, this queen right here writes her songs alone. I cannot do that. I am, she's way better than I am. Um, I, I'm like in with the artist and it's all very collaborative. And so my idea is, is, is to talk to the artist and focus the artist and like find the best version of their truth for that day. And what was really cool was like talking to Sergio, the director, my job was to find his version, like turn his truth and his story of this movie into a song. Um, so to kind of elevate and focus and consolidate this vision that he's been working on a lot fucking longer than I have and like find a three minute version of that that would help elevate and focus what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, there is a line in a movie where um, a kid says like, oh, it's in reference to Klaus, like it's like he's invisible. Mm -hmm. Is that where you got the title? It, it was it was all a part of it. The the the, the idea of you know, the main message of the movie is, is joy, as I said before, joy and love and acceptance, right? And the idea that, and, and kindness and random acts of kindness. And I feel like the greatest things in life, you know, are invisible. Um, and whether it's conversation, isn't, even though you can see us talking, 
what we're actually talking about and the feelings that we're feeling are invisible and love is invisible and all that stuff. So it, it came from, from the line in the movie and then it came from just thinking about like, as songwriters, you have to kind of have to say the same fucking thing a hundred different times in different ways that somehow are more emotional and more beautiful. Catchy and, like, and and so I thought like how do you say like it's not about the greatest things in life are free because it's not about free it's not about that it's just about they're invisible and so that's kind of where it all came from. Uh, well you talked about how this is a kids movie but it's also a Christmas movie and there yes. is like a very warm tone to the melody so did you have that in mind too? When you guys yeah well we it? just wanted to feel classic yeah. you know because the I think the key to holiday music is that it just kind of feels it's very timeless mm -hmm. um, and of course the pop stars do do holiday albums that are very time full they're full of time mm -hmm. um, you know it, it, it <laughs> You know, there's a really fabulous Gaga Christmas song that's like a super yeah. dance pop Christmas song from years ago. There's Backstreet Boys Christmas. Like, there are Chris holiday songs that are time full. Um, but I think the ones that we all love and the reason why they work is because like the they're, standards they're timeless. Saying, yeah. um, and so we wanted it to definitely not, it's not a religious song or it's not a, a Christmas song specifically, but it definitely, want, we wanted to have that classic feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, the song also plays during like a montage when they're like dropping off presents mm -hmm. in the movie. So, uh, did you know it was going to be part of a scene in an actual movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew. I knew um, which scene ish because, like I said, it was still yeah. all being done. But I, I knew that the the there's the um, the Klaus and Jesper have this moment where they they decide to perform this random act of kindness. Um, uh, and we knew the song was going to live in in that scene in that world, and so it was. It's not about the fact that they are giving this fabulous young girl a gift. It's about that they are coming together to do something really nice and beautiful. Something. Mm -hmm. So of course they're giving her something, but it's the emotion behind it is invisible. Mm -hmm. The greatest things you'll ever know are invisible. Yes. Do you um, approach that differently when you know like it's going to be part of the actual movie as opposed to just like the end credits? Like, yeah, I, I definitely because it's you're you're serving. You know, the, the the director is your pop star and the scene is your pop star. And I'm sorry for keep saying that, but that's the way that that's what I do every day. So that's how I think about it. Um, and so like the, yeah, I have to I'm there to like elevate and focus the scene. I am not there to um, it's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do with trying to make the best piece of music for that moment in this movie and to capture that moment and to capture the essence of the movie as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so what are you working on now? Right now I am. Uh, uh, well, I just had um, two Selena Gomez songs come out, which is very exciting. And one of them hit number one this week. One of them is yeah. number one this week, which is very exciting. Thank you. Um, and so there's more Selena stuff coming, which is, she's one of my favorite human beings to work with. She's just so honest and so passionate about telling truthful stories that will hopefully help other people uh, get through whatever it is they're going through. Um, uh, I am executive producing BB Rex's album and uh, she is one of the greatest songwriters of our time. And um, I don't want to say she's underrated because she's shockingly successful, but I feel like more people need to talk about what an unbelievable musician she is. Yeah. yeah she's like a, a writer's writer. Um, so I'm doing that. Uh, I'm going to Vegas next week to work with Imagine Dragons again. Mm -hmm. Um, well, with Dan Reynolds specifically, and then we'll see what happens. But um, but yeah, just just doing doing what I do, and then working on a whole bunch more film and TV stuff. Because uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, that um, is the whole reason I started making music in the first place. So I am diving headfirst into that world. Maybe and a Disney movie for you. No. Well, I mean. We'll see if they will, you know, a little more, a little more progressive. Mm -hmm. Maybe some, yeah. maybe some people of color can be animated. Mm -hmm. You know, it is the animation. You, they could be any color yeah, you anything, wanted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, but they still love white people. Um, yeah. But um, <laughs> so well, maybe if they had some queer characters, I'd be really into it. Um, but so Disney would be the dream, but they would have to get. They in need line to get with you, my like, activism, writing the movie too. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm working on a whole bunch of stuff, and it's it's really exciting. Awesome. 